Hello SpaceX fans, we are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. In this video, we will be bringing you up to date with the recent developments in the crazy world of SpaceX. Elon Musk is hell-bent on colonizing Mars. That's the spirit with which he founded SpaceX, his rocket company, in 2002. Musk was frustrated that NASA wasn't doing more to get people to the red planet, and concerned that a backup plan for humanity wasn't being developed for when Earth becomes an uninhabitable wasteland. Since then, SpaceX has developed several impressive aerospace systems. Falcon 1, its first orbital rocket. Grasshopper, a small self-landing test rocket. Falcon 9, a reusable orbital class launcher. Dragon, a spaceship for cargo and soon NASA astronauts. Falcon Heavy, a super heavy lift launcher. And the Starship, a fully reusable launch vehicle. But Mars is cold unforgiving and an almost airless rock located an average of 140 million miles from Earth. How exactly are people going to survive the trip? Musk offered few details about the life inside the spaceship that would transport people to Mars, though he promised that the trip would be fun with restaurants and zero-g games. There were no concrete descriptions of how the passengers would pass the time and crucially stay alive. The increased levels of radiation that people will experience on a trip to Mars is one of NASA's biggest concerns. Deep space is filled with tiny energized particles, either from solar flares or deep space cosmic rays, that have the potential to harm people during the voyage. Astronauts on the International Space Station are largely shielded from this radiation, thanks to Earth's magnetic field, which deflects most of the deep space particles. But those on missions to Mars will not have the planet's magnetic shielding, and it's not known what effects that may have on the human body. Musk was remarkably casual about this danger though. There's going to be some risk of radiation, but it's not deadly, said Musk. There will be some slightly increased risk of cancer, but I think it's relatively minor. He went on to describe ways that Mars colonists could shield themselves, perhaps by reorientating the spaceship during a solar flare and huddling under a column of water. Still, he made it clear he wasn't particularly concerned about this problem. The radiation thing is often brought up, but I think it's not too big of a deal, Musk said. This casual approach to radiation isn't shared by some space researchers. Radiation, he may have downplayed it a little more than I would have, says McKay. It's not a showstopper, but you have to worry about solar flares. McKay also says there needs to be a storm shelter in which fuel or some other liquid is used to slow down the and deflect incoming particles. He discussed this very quickly. It's a very sketchy solution, but that's basically the solution for radiation. While there may be ways to hide from radiation, there's something that the space travelers won't be able to escape on their way to Mars. Microgravity. People's bodies go through dramatic changes in zero gravity. They can lose bone density, their muscles atrophy, and their eyesight gets worse. What exercise regimes will the crew need to do? How will 80 days on a ship affect them? Zero-G games may be fun, but the entire mission will be for naught if people's bodies deteriorate on the way to Mars. More questions remain once the crew reaches Mars. What will they do all day? And how long are they expected to stay before they take a return trip? Musk already has some ideas about how best to run the planet. He suggests a direct democracy, but it seems unlikely that the very first people on Mars will be tasked with figuring that out. Instead, they'll be more concerned with staying alive. Mars already has a magnetic field, but compared to Earth's, it's relatively weak and sporadic. The team, which includes NASA's chief scientist, James Lauer Green, proposes several methods to improve its strength and reliability, including restarting the planet's iron core or establishing a giant loop of solid-state batteries. Needless to say, each of the suggestions would require an enormous amount of resources, all of which would have to be flown to Mars. But as the researchers explain, power for the project could come from nuclear fission reactors, which have long been considered a necessity for Mars colonization. Still, while it seems it'll be some time before Earthlings are taking over Mars, it should give us plenty more opportunities to learn all we can about the planet. And who knows, maybe they'll eventually come across some Martians who might be able to help get the magnetic field in shape for us Earthlings. But another question stands, how will the Martian colony survive without sustenance? With the mission to Mars on the horizon and astronauts spending longer than ever in orbit, scientists are looking for ways to grow vegetables in space. 
In the film The Martian, astronaut Mark Watney survives being stranded on the red planet by farming potatoes in Martian dirt fertilized with feces. Future Mars astronauts could grow crops in the dirt to avoid solely relying on resupply missions and to grow a greater amount and variety of food with the hydroponics alone. But new lab experiments suggest that growing food on the red planet will be more complicated than simply planting crops with poop. The soil on Earth is full of microbes and other organic matter that helps plants grow, but Mars dirt is basically crushed rock. The new result tells you that if you want to grow plants on Mars using soil, you're going to have to put in a lot of work to transform that material into something that plants can grow in, says planetary scientist Kevin Cannon of the Colorado School of Mines in Golden Colo. Although the light intensity was Mars-like, the atmosphere was Earth-like. Plants on Mars would need to be grown in a greenhouse with an Earth-like atmosphere, said Edward Gunyam, a professor of astronomy and astrophysics at Villanova University in Villanova, PA. Gunyan developed the Red Thumbs Mars Garden Project for his annual undergraduate level astrobiology class and supervised the experiments. This is because the plants would struggle to survive in Mars's thin, cold and dusty atmosphere. The need for indoor cultivation actually offers a benefit, he said, because the plant's respiration could become part of the atmospheric recycling of a colony. Even with the right, non-poisonous composition, the students ran into some issues with the soil. Mars's regolith, a very fine clay-like powder, dry out very quickly, if not constantly watered. Soil dryness was solved by regular watering, although Guinyan estimated that Martian greenhouses would need to maintain a constant 50% to 60% humidity to avoid soil dryness. The soil also packs too tightly to let roots or subsurface vegetables grow, they found. The class solved the soil density problem by aerating it with some shredded cardboard or vermiculites to give the roots and vegetables room to grow. Cardboard was more ideal, Guinyan explained, because it might already be part of shipping material people would need to take to Mars and colonists wouldn't need to import unneeded supplies. Planning for a city on Mars, before any humans have ever set foot on the planet, feels like the definition of running before you can walk. But the typically ambitious Musk feels like par for the course. This is the same guy that sets tough goals for fully autonomous driving electric vehicle production and rocket reusability. The city on Mars indeed may not arrive in Musk's lifetime, but the stretch goal could lead to some impressive milestones along the way. It could mean landing people on Mars, creating the most powerful rocket ever, making spaceflight more commonplace, and opening up space to the broader industry. With this, we have come to the end of our video. Congrats on having such a great attention span. Let us know how excited you are about the new ventures of SpaceX down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.